Texas Central Railway bullet train project plows ahead as the NIMBY case against it is finally shot down in an embarrassing fashion. Plus, China begins operating its two-mile-high AI bullet train in Tibet, finally connecting the entire nation's provinces by bullet train. The news coming up in... A big shout out to our sponsors and fellow passengers on Patreon, which keeps this train speeding forward and also gives you access to goodies, merch, and perks like early access, behind the scenes, and private chats. Thank you. On board to the news. Imagine those futuristic and super fast Japanese bullet trains. But here, in America, between Dallas and Houston, Texas, at over 205 miles an hour. That's the goal of the Texas Central Railway, a private corporation partly funded by the Central Japan Railway to connect two of the fastest growing American cities 250 miles apart in under 90 minutes. However, for the last five years, there has been contention between Texas Central and a group of Texans against the High Speed Rail Project, geniusly named Texans Against High Speed Rail Incorporated. Really, come on, I've seen bargain bin Toys R Us McMartial Arts DVDs come up with better villain names. You know, the one you got from an estranged family member on your birthday two weeks after the fact. Here comes the Crimson Sausage. Bruh. The group started as a minority of voices in the Texas Central Valley protesting the project, better known as NIMBYs, aka Not In My Backyard. They're quite popular here in the United States. Similar groups have popped up all over the country, such as in Florida and California. And yeah, they're exactly the type of people you think they are. Okay, boomer. The most vocal leader of the NIMBY group is former judge and now Texas State Representative Ben Lehman, who also happened to be the CEO of an oil drilling company. Just like how the former CEO of American Airlines, Robert Crandall, was the chief funder behind Citizens Against Railway Expansion in Florida. It writes itself at this point. I, I couldn't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. I'm sad that I lack the talent to make this shit up. But it gets better. For the last several years, the Texas NIMBY group has argued through a lawsuit that Texas Central Railway cannot use eminent domain powers because they claim that Texas Central Railway is not a railroad. <laughs> As of June 22nd, the U.S. Department of Transportation, DOT, has thrown the case out, as the lawsuit wasn't just only filed 162 days late after the Federal Railroad Administration's publishing of its final rule of particular applicability, <laughs> but it also filed a suit in a West District of Texas court instead of a Federal Court of Appeals. The completely wrong court. According to the DOT, Department of Transportation, quote, it is undisputed that the RPA, Rule of Particular Applicability, is a final agency action. It is also clear that the RPA was issued pursuant to the FRA's authority to promulgate railroad safety laws. Accordingly, because the FRA's RPA is a final action of the Secretary of Transportation within the meaning of 49 U.S. Code Section 20114C, that same statutory provision requires that challenges like this one shall be brought in the appropriate Court of Appeals. The Hobbs Act similarly strips this court of jurisdiction. Another loss for the NIMBYs where probably untold amounts of money have been spent and will probably continue to get spent on frivolous and doomed to fail lawsuits. Similar to their counterparts in Florida, who spent $5 million in their lawsuit, five times more than the cost they now have to pay for their share of road upgrades. Texas Central Railway can finally move forward full speed ahead, as this lousy lawsuit has been finally shot down. Texas style. You know, some people just don't like trains. Do you like trains? I like trains. Then like this video. Some more people can like trains. And soon, 
the whole world will like trains. That's not at all my goal, but hey, you can always try. As our good old US of A is just beginning its journey into high speed rail, China, within a span of less than 15 years, has finished connecting its network to all provinces within its control. On June 25th, the Lhasa Ningxing Railway began operating between the two terminal cities in the Tibet Autonomous Region, which covers 435 kilometers at 160 kilometers an hour. Now we'll convert that from Euro babble into English. Or 270 miles at about 100 miles per hour, which may not seem that fast even compared to Brightline, but it is running close to two miles above sea level on the Himalayan mountain range and is a hybrid engine running on both electricity and diesel depending on the area, as well as having its own oxygen supply. Probably the most nifty thing about the Fuxing train set, this high-speed mountain carver, is that it's AI-driven and operated. From the bathrooms, the vending machines, the climate control and oxygen, to yes, even the driving is automated. It's all monitored, so the train won't go doing things it shouldn't, Although, to be fair, I'd rather have the computer driving in China. Action now! Good luck, everybody else! That wraps it up for this week of Fast News. Let us know what you think of these stories in the comments below. We have interviewed former president of Texas Central, Judge Robert Eccles, in the past, and you can watch this video right over here. But we would like to bring on Carlos Aguilar, as many of you requested. So tweet out to TCR and let them know too. Make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell so you can be on time when the next train arrives. Thank you for writing on this episode of Fast News presented by the American Rail Club. See you on board next time.